happy independence. I'm just doing a microphone check, you know, this is too loud a little bit. So today we, today we're going to um, be having a different procession. Um, the acolytes will come in and followed by uh, Bob Olson and uh, Drew Vanna, they'll be carrying the flags. And Kathleen Vanna will come in also with the Bible. So, and when they come in here, JJ Hager is going to be leading us in sing, uh, to sing the Star Spangled Banner. But we, I would want all of us to be in a standing position, but please don't accompany him because he's going to be playing his guitar. So please just honor the flags as you stand. And while they come in, pay attention to the words of the video on the screens. So it is time to start the procession now. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
YouTube. Okay. All right. Isn't it uh, awesome to see JJ? I think this is his first performance and he plays on independence. You're going to be a great guy, JJ. Clap for him again, please. Now, as we get ready to um, take the call to worship, I will invite you to just think of the freedom that God has given you as an individual and as a nation. This is freedom that can never be taken for granted. So let's appreciate God as we take the call to worship. We gather this morning appreciating our freedom to worship God. We draw near to the God who rules over all nations. We seek to live in harmony and peace together with all peoples on earth. Come, let us worship the Lord. Amen. And we're going to sing America the Beautiful. You may be seated. Good morning and happy birthday, America, our 245th birthday. And on this day especially, but um, all the time, I thank God that I live in a country that allows us to come out and worship on, openly and the God of our choice. Uh, 
no announcements for today. The flowers on the altar are given by Dorothy Carnine in memory of Forrest and her family. Warren and Jeannie Sedeby are in need of volunteers to help load their U-Haul truck this Friday, July 9th. The time will be announced through Facebook and on the phone crew when it is closer to Friday. The Alliance Methodist Church is accepting applications for the position of Director of Ministries. This person will work closely with the pastor and other ministry leaders, coordinate children, youth, and outreach ministries, help strengthen the spiritual life of the congregation through relationships, nurturing, caregiving, and providing resources to committee, small groups, and individuals. Applications can be picked up at the church office and will be accepted until the position is filled. If you have any prayer requests or concerns, call the church office or message us on our Facebook page. If you wish to give online, please see Facebook page and click the Shop Now button. If you have any questions, feel free to call Renita at the church. Vacation Bible School will be held at the United Methodist Church here in Alliance from 9 until 11 on July 19th through the 23rd. This year's theme is Knights of the North Castle, and we will be in search of the armor of God. Thank you to all who have stepped up to be on the VBS team. Our team is now complete. Praise the Lord. I am so excited to have our salvation or our station leaders and castle guides in place. However, we still need the children. BBS is open to children five years through fourth grade. All children in that age group are welcome. All children attending need to be pre-registered. You may do that online or you can pick up a registration form at the church office and return it to the office or return it to the VBS mailbox in the hall across from the office. Call Renita at the church or Annette for the web address. If you wish to donate to help VBS, there are items on pieces of paper on the wall by the door in the narthex. Don't forget to pick one up, drop the items off during the week in the church office. Thank you. If you would be interested in mowing the lawn this summer, the sign-up sheet is also in the narthex. Thank you for your help. I'll invite us to be in prayer for many people who have traveled because of the holidays. And let's pray for safety for all those that are serving this nation in one way or the other, especially in our military, uh, our police force, prison services, and just giving their time for, for this nation. Some, some people find themselves in situations that we cannot even talk about because they are very very difficult situations so please let's always be in prayer for them and and trust god that he will continue to lead and be with them in everything they do and uh, let's be in prayer for florida and the coming storm um, let's let's pray that god will will intervene appropriately and um I want us being, being independent, I want to hear a few people, what are you thankful for? Just tell a little bit of what you're thankful for that America has independence. What are you thankful for because America has independence? Yes. Freedom to worship God. Yeah, just think and yeah, freedom to vote. Yes, yeah, yeah, 
freedom to move freely and freedom of speech. That is, that's great. Freedom of religion. Freedom of religion. Yeah. yeah. Freedom to be able to pursue happiness. Yes. Yeah, just keep thinking. I mean, there's a lot that probably you may not remember right away, but do you know in some, in some countries you cannot own property? Freedom to have a home that you can go to. You know, and there, there are so many things. When we get thinking, we just need to thank God because for the past, past 245 years, many people have sacrificed themselves because of this freedom. And let's thank God for that. Let's not take it for granted because God has given this freedom and we need to live as people who are free and be thankful and actually occupy, do the things that God would want us to do with the freedom. You know, and seek to live and let others also that are around us live free. So that is, that is something we definitely need to thank God about. So I will want us to go to the Lord in prayers. But I want us to take a moment of silence in your heart. Just thank God for anything that God has blessed you with. And thank God that we are here today. And that we don't have to hide in bunkers to worship. But we can worship freely. So let's go to the Lord in prayers. <coughs> Yes, Jesus, <clears throat> it is so sweet to trust in you. And it is so sweet to think of the freedom you have granted the United States. So many people have the name of being free, but they are not truly free. But just like your word tells us that <clears throat> we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Lord, I pray that you take the glory and honor that you gave this nation freedom and you want people to live as those who are free. But not only that, to live as those who truly know you because you set the foundations of this nation in a way that people will get to know you and get to serve you. I pray that, oh God, <clears throat> Where, O oh God, the government has failed, where, O oh God, citizens have failed, where we have done things, O oh God, that do not bring praise unto you. I pray that, Father, you forgive us and remind us, O oh God, that you set people free so that they, O oh Lord, can share the freedom that comes through Christ. Thank you so much for this time. And thank you, Father, because you are with us in this worship service. For in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for the offerings. I will invite the ushers to come forward. That's sweet. Let's pray together. Thank you. As we stand, O oh God, in front of your people, representing your congregation, 
for the gifts and blessings that you have always given us. We pray that as we bring these offerings, O oh God, Lord, I pray that you will bless the offerings and you will take what we are given, O oh God, to be a token of our commitment to you. And Father, let these offerings be to the glory and honor of your name. I thank you this morning because as we give, that is how you have given so much to this nation. Lord, what we give today cannot pay for what you have given to us. So Lord, I pray, O oh God, that we first of all give ourselves unto you and you receive us and use the gifts that we're given, oh God, to bless so many ministries, to bless so many people, to bring people closer to you. Let this be an act of our stewardship because we pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May be seated, please. This morning I'll be reading from Hosea. He lived at a time when Israel was doing very well and was prosperous, much like the United States today. But they were turning away from God and worshiping gods of their own and also oppressing the poor. Hosea is trying to get Israel to return to God in his ways. This is Hosea 14, one through seven. O Israel, come back, return to your God. You're down, but you're not out. Prepare your confession and come back to God. Pray to him, take away our sin, accept our confession. 
receive as restitution our repentant prayers. Assyria won't save us. Horses won't get us where we want to go. We'll never again say our God to something we've made or made up. You're our last hope. Is it not true that in you, the orphan finds mercy? And now it's children's time. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody? Good. Good. Okay, I have a question for you. We're going to talk a lot about freedom today, so I want to ask you a question. Have any of you guys ever, do you have any pets? You have pets? Did you get your, perhaps maybe get your pet from the pound? Did you rescue your pet? Or did you buy it someplace else? Well, I don't have any pets at my house, but um, sometimes I see commercials on the TV where they're talking about all these poor dogs that are stuck in pens and, you know, nobody wants them and they need to be rescued and they're in cages, right? My sister had this dog and um, it would stay in its kennel and then when they would let the dog out of the kennel, it would get so excited and it would run around and it would bark and it would jump on you and it would be so excited, right? Because it was so excited to be out of the cage, right? And I imagine that um, those dogs don't like to be in those cages, right? They don't like to be kind of stuck in that cage, right? So when they get out, they're free and they get excited. And when we take them home, my sister had to teach her dog, right? She had to teach her dog not to bark and not to yell and not to, right? Had to teach her dog all those things, how to live when he was free, right? Instead of being in the cage all the time, right? So we're kind of like those dogs, right? I mean, we don't live in a cage, right? But we can be trapped and enslaved to our sin, right? Okay, we can be bound by guilt and sin, and it's sort of like being stuck in a, in a cage. But Jesus is the person who makes us free, right? He frees us from our sin by his death on the cross, right? So just because we have freedom from our sin doesn't mean we can go out and do whatever we want, right? We have to live how Jesus wants us to live, right? We have to learn the right way to behave. I'm going to read a verse that um, Roger didn't read, but it's from Galatians, and it says, You, my brothers, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. So in other words, we have a different kind of freedom now, and we need to live as Jesus wants us to live because of that freedom. Jesus paid the price for us, and he freed us from our sin. So we need to live to serve God. He will teach us how to do that, right, if we listen to him and read our Bibles. Apart from him, though, we can do nothing. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for paying the price of our freedom, freeing us from guilt and our sin. Father God, I would pray that you would teach each one of us to live like you would want us to live. In Jesus' name, amen.
hearing the voices, I thought uh, Val is still here. Okay, well, this morning, <clears throat> I'm not so much here to preach, but I'm here to remind us of God's goodness to America and his invitation in the midst of his goodness to come back to him. In the past 245 years of American independence, God truly blessed this country with greatness. God raised America and placed her above the Committee of Nations, and God granted the might to keep her and to keep her head high against the enemies of these nations, both within and without. God blessed America with abundance. And he blessed America with so much that cannot even be enumerated. There is a lot of advancement in so many areas, so much so that it is difficult sometimes to trust God because things are working in the way that we think are okay. And sometimes we tend not to see the hand of God as the one who has blessed this nation. The blessing of God over America are too much to be counted. You know, I can only compare these blessings of God that he has bestowed on this nation with the blessings that he blessed the nation Israel. Actually, Israel was not a nation that existed. They were not even a people that existed. But God raised one person. And from that one person, they multiplied. And they were in slavery. But God brought them out of Egypt and established them and gave them the power to overcome those that were around them. He gave them a promised land. And this is the land that he called a land that was flowing with milk and honey. That just demonstrates the abundance that God gave Israel. They flourished. They conquered. They were so much economically, so much so that in the days of David and Solomon, they conquered all the enemies around them and took over economic power that other nations actually were paying tributes, were bringing money to pay them because they were actually in church. But not long before they enjoyed that uh, uh, abundance, they turned their backs against God. Their kings turned, turned away from God and started doing things in the way they wanted. Take, for instance, Solomon's heart was misled by many of his foreign wives. In fact, at a point, Solomon so much turned away from God that he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Can you imagine having 1,000 mother-in-laws to deal with? <laughs> you know, in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4, we read that as Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord God as the heart of his father David had been. The nation of Israel continued to drift away from God, and the law he had given them to govern them, they walked away from it and made for themselves the laws they wanted to make. They chose their own ways. Then God gave them up into the hands of the Assyrians and Babylonians to be punished. But I want you to know that even when God gave them out to be punished, God is always merciful. So much so that in Psalm 103 verse 8, there we read that the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. This is the context of our passage in Hosea 14. God wanted to illustrate his deep love for Israel and how Israel had treated him in return. 
to give a clear illustration. He wanted to bring a picture right before them. God instructed Hosea to take for himself a wife that was unfaithful, a wife that was going after other men, a wife that had children for other men, even though she was still married to Hosea. She would go out and commit prostitution, and God will send Hosea to the streets. Go bring back your wife, and Hosea will go and bring her back home. Hosea still loved and cared for her. You know, that woman was an example of Israel. And Hosea was playing the character of God in this illustration. God still loved the nation of Israel. Even though they had given themselves away, he still loved them and he wanted to bring them back. Can you just imagine that you are in the place of God? Those of you that are men among us, Men are so jealous, so much so that sometimes if a man sees another man with his wife, he can take a gun and shoot the other man because they are so jealous. God said he is a jealous God and he doesn't want to share his bride, which is the church. He doesn't want to share his bride at that time, which was Israel, with any other man. And he said, Hosea, still, go bring her. I will keep my jealousy to myself because I still love you. God, who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy, was still inviting the nation of Israel to come back to him in repentance. Well, the repentance is played out for us here in Hosea chapter 14. The Bible said, O Israel, come back, return to your God. You are down, but you are not out. Prepare your confession and come back to God. Sometime what defeats us is not that we have done something wrong, but when we see ourselves that we are completely down and that we are helpless, or that we are no longer loved. That is when we are defeated. God invited Israel in a confession. Oh, Israel, come back. Return to your God. Even though you are down, even though you, you actually have fallen, you are down, but you are not out. God still loves you. And then Israel hearkened to that invitation and this was the confession that was to be played out. They were to go to God. And this is what their confession was going to look like. Take away our sins. Accept our confession. Receive as restitution our repentant prayer. Assyria won't save us. Horses won't get us where we want to go. We'll, we'll never again say our God with a little g to something we've made or made up. You are our last hope. It is, not, is it not true that in you the orphans find mercy? They were to truly come before God in repentance. They were to see that even the horses they have, their military might, everything they had, their economic might, anything, they were to see that that cannot save them. Only God. There are no alliances with any foreign powers that was, was going to save them because Assyria will not save them. And God is so faithful in that text that when we go back to him, because he had said it, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, and pray and seek my face and turn away from their sins. Then he said, I will hear them from heaven and I will forgive their land. I will cleanse them from all their unrighteousness. So God actually in this showed them the restitution, the restoration that was right ahead of them in that same text. God will forgive Israel and they will grow again. God will restore their bounty 
and God will restore their strength and might. God will restore their values and God will restore their abundance. You know, when I read this text and I was thinking of the independence and I look at the things that are happening, my heart was very heavy. Sometimes we celebrate and we wish that the bad things that are happening should not even happen. Because those of you that have lived long, if you look back to when actually you were younger and today when you see the things that are happening in the nation, your heart will touch you. And when I was just thinking about this, I just imagined God talking to America. And I just imagined that God was giving a word to America. And the word probably will sound like this. America, I will heal you. America, America, I gave birth to you. And I have loved you ever since. I raised you and put you above other nations. By the mention of your name, America, other nations tremble. Your might and your achievements go before, before you. You have led the world in the fight for the freedom of others. You sacrificed your very own loved ones so that others may leave. Many of your soldiers paid the ultimate price for the freedom of this nation of yours and even other nations. America, you won many wars and battles, both within and outside your seashores, for the sake of the high values I gave you. As I was leading you to win the world, you turned around and took me out of your public spaces. Many have relegated me to the background. America, I still love you. You are still in my heart. I want to forgive you and make you grow again. But you need to remember my word that said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive them. I will forgive their sins and will heal their land. America, I want to bless you again, but you need to remember my word in Psalm 33 verse 12 that states, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. Oh, America, I want to continue to be your God. But you have to realign your values with mine. And you have to seek me first and seek my kingdom first and my righteousness. America, America, the Lord your God is waiting for you. When we look at the present realities of this nation, those of you that your hearts are seeking after God, you are bound to remember what God did when he visited Abraham. He told Abraham, I want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abraham said, Please, Lord, do not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. If you find at least 10 righteous people, will you still destroy them? God said, no, I will not destroy them. I want to assure you that there are still more than 10 righteous people in this nation who will not allow their eyes to see the day, the light of day, because they are praying and seeking God's face for this nation. God invites his church today. Instead of us to keep fighting against what divides us and fighting on what kind of carpet we would have or what kind of organ we need or what kind of worship services we should have. God is inviting his church today to come back unto him and pray and seek his face 
This nation is a nation after God's own heart. And God wants to bless this nation every day. But he is inviting us not to join the bandwagons of those that bring bitterness and anger and hatred among ourselves, but be among those that would be on our knees and seek God's face to lift this nation and put it on a pedestal where God has placed it instead of pulling it down from where God wants it to be. God, of course, wants this nation to be an example to so many other nations. And this nation has actually been that way until we got to the point where we felt like we have arrived. We have not. Without God, we can do nothing. But with God, who gives the United States the strength, the United States will do everything to God's glory. We can find hope in the future of God's kingdom. Because what a blessing that today we have communion. You know, when we celebrate communion, we are not only looking at the painful death of Jesus Christ, or even just his resurrection. But Paul told the Corinthian church, he said, what I give you, I receive from the Lord, and because I receive this from the Lord, as often as you do this, you proclaim my death. Even looking forward to his return. So that is what God wants us to be. He wants us to prophetically look to the future. As we share communion, we are reminded that we can be people who can bring God's kingdom right here and right now. So I invite you as you think and as you pray in your heart, I would just want you to meditate. What is it that I need to do as a child of God to move this nation towards the direction that God intended this nation to be? What would I do as a child of God? Sometimes we sit down and say, is the government. Do you know that we can pray our governments to the right track? Do you know that it is God who enthroned governments and it is God who removed them? If the people of God agree and say, Lord, you have placed this government, this is what we are desiring of you. God is going to raise a movement to bring things to his own glory. But as we take communion, let's think about this and let's trust God that God will bless this nation. So I invite us to take the meditation for our communion together. Because on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, the Bible tells us that he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, Jesus Christ, he took up the cup and gave thanks to God and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this cup. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body and blood of Christ that is redeemed to your glory. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. I will invite the communion service to come forward and help me. we thank you because we can fellowship with one another as we share in communion. I pray that as we give and share this bread and wine, Lord, may your presence continue to abide with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let me, let me give you this too. You give them the bread so that they don't have to take by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. No, you give it to them. Yeah. I invite all of us to come forward.
as the last song is sung, the acolyte will come forward and then we'll move the flags out and the Bible. But this time, if you notice, the Bible was following way behind. We would want the Bible to go forward. God's word to lead as the flags follow. Keep that imagery in your mind and keep praying that someday we're going to see that happen. Thank you. Please stand for closing him. freedom found, freedom from our shame and bondage to sin, freedom to walk in the light, freedom from our selfishness and pride, freedom to love and to serve, freedom from the and pain, freedom to embrace life and your movement of liberation for all people, for all your people here on earth, Lord, we come to you and ask that you help us to live as people who are truly free. In Jesus' name, amen.